On this episode of Things That Matter, we are discussing uh, pastoral ministry, and today we're going to be looking at the pastor as a Christian. So stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to this new season of Things That Matter, and welcome to this episode. And for this season, we're going to be talking about pastoral ministry. So excited about the theme, and I'm going to be having a conversation this season with two of my dear friends. Uh, Richard Tomino is here with me. Richard uh, pastors uh, Metro Calvary in Roseville, California. And uh, Richard and I have been close friends and ministry uh, colleagues for many, many years. And then uh, John Wang is also with us here. And John is part of our pastoral team here at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa. John has pastored in uh, Oregon. He has uh, pastored in Brazil, church planted and pastored. And uh, now he currently leads our young adults group and does a lot of things with our Bible college. So um, hopefully, we're going to have uh, some great discussions around a variety of topics that, that pertain to pastoral ministry. So today, we're going to be talking about the pastor as a Christian. That's kind of just where everything starts as being a Christian. And so John is going to be the one who's going to sort of pitch uh, some of the questions and get the conversation going uh, with Richard and I. So John. Take her away. Well, I'll tell you, it is such a privilege to be here with both of you guys. And um, just let me start by saying thank you, because both of you have just been a major part of my life um, and my personal growth as a Christian man and as a pastor. And so to be able to be able to sit with the two of you and to talk about pastoral ministry is a huge honor. And uh, so I just want to just just let you know that I'm so grateful, and I and I know that there's going to be a whole other generation of people that that God's calling and moving into ministry that's going to benefit from this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, John, we've um, we've done a few things, us three. We we've done some things recently together, and on a few of those occasions, you've kind of shared with the audience a little bit about your history with us, and there's something that I think is really powerful mm -hmm. about it because it goes back so many years. And it really goes back to the time when you were a kid, just sort of dreaming about maybe, you know, serving God in some way. And then the Lord brought both the, myself and Richard along to have yeah. some some influence in your life. But maybe it'd be cool just to take a second and just tell tell that story real quick. Well, you know, you know I was thinking about this today, actually. Uh, when I first was introduced to you, Brian, I was in junior high, and it, it struck me that you were only in your 20s. And, and, and the reason why I was thinking about this today is because you, as a 20-something-year-old man, saw something in a junior high kid, mm -hmm. and you were willing to speak truth into my life and to start investing into me. And, and mm -hmm. it made me walk away thinking, how many 20-year-olds are doing that today? Mm -hmm. And, and I was thinking about you, Richard. I mean, you were in your 30s when the Lord brought you into my life and, and thinking the same thing. Like how many young adult, 30-year-old person is investing in a freshman or a sophomore in high school and identifying those spiritual gifts and callings in my life? So I was just blown away by that. Mm -hmm. But um, when I first met you, Brian, I remember sitting in a chapel in, in our uh, Christian school. It was a junior high um, chapel event and you and Cheryl came and spoke and and I remember you challenged us about serving the Lord and at the end of your message you invited everybody that felt like they wanted to um, serve God to raise their hands mm -hmm. and so as a kid I remember raising my hand and and then you you made this challenge that I never forgot and that was hey you that have raised your hand think about what you're doing because the Lord's going to take you up on that offer mm -hmm. and I remember being there as a seventh grader thinking yeah Lord take mm -hmm. me up on that offer mm -hmm. and I don't know if you remember this but Later, when Back to Basics, your radio program started airing on the radio, um, you were in the in a series through the Gospel of Mark, and I remember I was listening to one of your programs, 
And I was so blessed by what you shared that I, I, I went and wrote a letter and I mailed it to you. <laughs> and then I remember getting a response from you in the mail. And again, as a junior high kid thinking, wow, not only is he reading my letter, but he's responding to it. Yeah. And then fast forward, we're at a retreat. It was a high school camp and you were one of the speakers and I came up to you and I said, hey, I just wanted to introduce myself. And um, uh, some time ago, I wrote you a letter and you said, yes, I know that letter. Mm -hmm. And that just blew wow. me away. <laughs> and, and from that point on, 30 years of friendship and yeah. being able to minister together yeah. has just been amazing. And then obviously Richard Semino, um, when you were I'm the high school pastor here. When I was transitioning from my eighth grade yep. year to my high school year, I mean, you were the man that God put in front of me. And during those four years as a high school pastor, you taught me um, to love the word and you modeled ministry for me. And, and again, I mean, just 30 plus years mm -hmm. of friendship mm -hmm. that now I'm in my 40s and you guys are in your 60s and we're still not only doing ministry together, but we're still liking each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that to me is massively yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is, it, it's amazing. I mean, you think of even, you know, sometimes you think, wow, like, are there, you know, are, are there any seventh graders today yeah. <laughs> that are, yeah. you know, thinking in terms of, man, I really wanna give myself to the Lord for my life. And, and yes, there are, you know, thank God. But I think, you know, sometimes you forget that, um, that at that stage in life, God can have, um, you know, such an impact in, in somebody's mm -hmm. um, life as to set them on a course that's going to basically lead them the rest of their life. And yeah. that's what's happened with you. So I know I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful too. <laughs> well, I am thankful to be here and to listen to both of you talk about the pastor and the pastoral ministry. And um, in the, the course of the next three episodes, we have a series of topics that we want to address. And again, I know that I'm going to benefit from this, but I also know that everyone that's going to be watching this program is going to benefit, especially those young guys that are looking for mentors, people that have been in pastoral ministry for a while and they've gone through the highs and the lows, they've gone through the good times and the bad, and you still are continuing to love Jesus, mm -hmm. you're continuing to be faithful in the preaching and teaching of the Word of God, mm -hmm. and, and yet at the same time, um, even though those core values have remained the same, there's still growth. And I was thinking about when Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, let your progress be seen and known by all men. And that's one of the reasons why I love sitting here with both of you because over the years, I've, I've had the privilege of seeing the progress that's happened in both your lives mm -hmm. as Christian men, as Christian husbands and parents and, and now grandfathers, but also men in the ministry. Mm -hmm. And so that brings us up to the first topic, which which is the pastor as a Christian. Now, um, that, that seems like it should be a given, mm -hmm. but I was thinking back to something I had read um, a while ago. It was um, in a book called The Reformed Pastor by um, an old English Puritan by the name of Richard Baxter. And he wrote, take heed to yourselves, lest you be void of that saving grace of God, which you offer to others and be strangers to the effectual working of that gospel, which you preach. And lest you famish yourself while you prepare food for them. Mm -hmm. And just being reminded again it, of that statement, it, it just reinforces how the conversation of the pastor as a Christian is still a relevant one. Yeah. And especially in a time when mm -hmm. church um, is drawn to big personality mm -hmm. concepts of pastoral ministry. So my question for both of you is, um, as a Christian man who has been called by God into pastoral ministry, on a practical level, how do you avoid confusing who you are in Jesus mm -hmm. with what you do for Jesus? Mm -hmm. Because I think that sometimes we confuse Christ-like character with um, our calling and our gifting. And, um, and as a result, for the sake of doing stuff for Jesus, we neglect the most important thing, mm -hmm. which is being in, in just that healthy, yeah. loving relationship with Christ. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'd love to just hear from you guys. And so, Pastor Brian, if we start with you. Mm 
Well, I, you know, this is certainly um, something that I, I think every single pastor, you know, Absolutely. will will deal with this and will kind of battle with it, mm-hmm. you know. And um, I, I mean, you know, here we sit in 2019, and I could I could name three. Uh, w- world uh, renowned pastors who right this moment are basically shelved out of the ministry wow. because not because they couldn't preach they could preach amazingly yeah. not because they couldn't lead a massive you know ministry they could do that very well but because they didn't keep their personal life with Jesus together mm-hmm. and that caused everything you know to unravel and, and like I said, nobody nobody's exempt from it. It's a battle that we all, um, I think, we live with. And you know, there's times when that battle is more intense, and other times. Uh, but I know for myself, I've had to just over and over again throughout the years, I've had to come back to that place and just stop and say, wait a second. Okay, I am, I am first and foremost a Christian. Yeah. Am I seeking Jesus? Am I uh, even in my preparation for preaching? Am I preaching to myself as well as to other yes. people? As I'm reading to study, uh, I think you can both, you know, study for your teaching and preaching, and also get ministered to at the same time. Uh, but but sometimes it's it's hard to navigate that, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but but it's a, it's a very real challenge that I, I think you know, Rich. Every every single pastor knows this battle. Oh, well, I, when I was just maybe on staff about a year here, um, got to go to Israel with Pastor Chuck, and we were just he'd finished teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, you know, on the, on the Mount of Beatitudes there, and he says, "Well, let's let's just think about this. We'll walk down this path over here to the bus, and let's just think about this." So I'm walking, and I got my jacket under my arm, and Suddenly, it gets ripped right out from underneath my arm, and I turned. It was just caught on some thistles. And Pastor Chuck was, you know, half a dozen steps or so behind me. He goes, "Wouldn't this be just a teaching moment for Jesus?" And talk about gathering figs from thistles. And and so we were just kind of stopped there. I said, "Chuck, can I ask you a couple questions?" I said, first, do you ever struggle with loving what you do for Jesus more than loving Jesus?" Mm-hmm. And he goes, "Every day of my life." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm looking at him and going, well, man, you're my pastor, and yeah. I've, I've grown to know the Lord by your teaching ministry, and it was so good to know. Because yeah. you just thought preeminently, like when he'd get in the pulpit, and you, you know, he'd just be beaming, and he'd just go, this guy just loves the Lord. Yeah. But for him to, it was just so like, it was kind of like, oh, this is normal. This is a real thing. It, yeah. It's a real thing, and it's a normal thing. Mm-hmm. And, and truly, like, it's, we don't have anything other than what we get from him. And sometimes when we get a little mechanical, yeah. a little routine, yeah. and it's so easy to just kind of feel like, God, I gotta stop and back up here. Yeah. And uh, when your wife's looking at you and she's just going, just be a Christian, <laughs> that's that's the cue. Like, yeah. oh, maybe I've gotten a little too into what I'm doing. Yeah. But but when people are patting you on the back yeah. and saying, oh, that was such a blessing, or you're such a blessing, mm-hmm. you do, John. Like what you're saying is you confuse your effectiveness and your gifting with mm-hmm. your spiritual condition. And yeah. uh, that is that is the thing to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. yeah and, and it's almost like the more, you know, maybe naturally gifted you are, or, you know, maybe the more charismatic your personality, the, the more you're able to, you know, build something significant, the, the more the, the danger exists, yeah. you know. Uh, because it's easy to just slip into the idea that somehow, you know, you're you're doing this, mm-hmm. and and then the other issues in your life, you just you know the the ones that need to be dealt with through you know responding to conviction or whatever, you you can easily sort of brush those aside because you're like, but yeah, but look at all of this, yeah. you know, look at this fruit, look yeah. at all these people, and look how God's using me. I must be okay, yeah, yeah. even though I might not really be okay at all. But yeah. it can be a false gauge yeah. uh, that, that you can fall into using. So, um, yeah, I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, seriously, just again because of you know the current moment that we're in. Uh, but recognizing, you know, Rich, you and I here, we are in our 60s, and um, this, this kind of stuff never goes away no it's always you know it's it's like the picture of you know when when the lord's speaking to cain you know sin is crouched at your door and just waiting to to leap on you and overtake you but you should overcome it and Mm -hmm. of course by god's grace and by Mm -hmm. just remembering i i think for me it's always just a good practice 
to go back and kind of remember where it all started. And I always come back to the same conclusion. Well, by the grace of God, I am what I am. So yes. I, I really got no place to do anything other than just say, you know, thank you, Jesus. Yes. I think at times people forget that part of pastoral ministry isn't just in the speaking, but it's in the living. You know, was, mm -hmm. when you think about in Hebrews chapter 13, and the Bible tells us that as spiritual leaders, you're supposed to set an example for others to watch and follow. Mm -hmm. And and, and what we want for the people that, that God's entrusted to us is that they would walk and follow Jesus and walk like Christ, love Jesus. And, and so for, for the two of you, because obviously in, in living life for Jesus, y you need to be proactive. Like there are things that you have to decide that you're gonna do every day that when you get out of bed and you prioritize, this is what my day is gonna look like, this is how I'm gonna move forward in it. And at the same time, to, um, to remember that we don't live our Christianity out by ourselves. We're not these isolated floating islands in the ocean, but we need each other. So on a practical level in, in, in growing as a Christian man, because we're always growing, mm -hmm. how do you cultivate that relationship on a practical level? What does, what does um, your Christian walk look like? Like what are the things that you prioritize on a daily basis that, you're, that you need to, to nurture your spiritual condition? And, and what is the role of, of Christian community in your life? Um, like, do you, do you let a bunch of people into that world? Do you let a handful of people in? So how do you cultivate that? Well, I think the first set of eyes and ears um, are my wife's. Mm -hmm. And um, she sees me pretty clearly. And I think we can be so easily fooled into seeing ourselves not so clearly. And I just, mm -hmm. the, the, the way that my wife can look at me and say mm -hmm. something, sometimes just with a look, mm -hmm. sometimes with words, but I think that's really important. And I was just thinking too about our kids, like, to, like if, if, what do our kids really value in us? You know, I don't think my kids, um, I don't want my kids to value the fact that, that God's called me to teach the Bible. Yeah and that I study and, and, and teach the Bible. I, when I hear them talk to me, it, I just get blessed when they talk to me about me, about as a, as a person, and about their dad. So that's the first circle of, with, you know, the, the, the closest group of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at, at Metro, we have a, a weekly time together with our leadership team. It's like six of us get together, and we've just kind of got a policy, like either, either this is gonna be true or we'll just quit. Let's just be real. This is where we're going to say who we are, what we are. You can tell me what you're seeing, and mm -hmm. I can see, I can tell you what I'm seeing in you, and um, I can tell you what I'm really struggling with. And if when we can't be doing that, then we just can't do this anymore. And and it's really it's really served us well, you know. And uh, it it's always comfortable to know that nobody has to be afraid to tell you what they're thinking mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. And and that's not a compromise in respect or anything. It's just like I really have felt like, you know, like we respect one another and that's why we'll say certain things. So I think that's kind of that, that sphere of people. But honestly, between home and that group of people, it's been these relationships over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, guys that I just know are on the other end of the phone who know me, mm -hmm. who really know me. And um, you know, it, it, the the way that you and I can connect after you know we could be apart for mm -hmm. a, a period of time and we come together, it's like we never were gone, right? Yeah. yeah. And and that's because I think there's there's always been a, a very great common relationship with Jesus, and and our conversations we can talk around them so many different things, yeah. and yet Jesus is just mm -hmm. popping up everywhere, mm -hmm. and I love that. And you know, from the time you were in high school, like. You, you, and you guys like Mike Harris and Jim Gallagher and you know Rob Salvato. Those guys, you guys were in and out of our home, so that was kind of like who we let in. Yeah, and the, even then, there was kind of accountability there, mm -hmm. right? Like because mm -hmm. you guys were like eyes on all the time. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I, I, I pretty much echo the same thing, you know. And um, and I thank God, you know, my my wife, like like your wife, Rich, is you know she's an amazing support um 
She's an amazing encouragement to me. And she's also occasionally an amazing rebuke. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, like you said, she she knows, I mean, you know, she'll just look right at me and just say, this is happening and this needs to stop right now. You know, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah she, she nailed that one. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate uh, her um, input, you know, into my life. And, and God's used her in so many ways to, um, you know, just to, help keep me on on course and um, I would have to then again just say the same thing you know my kids uh, my daughter's out from New York uh, right now staying with us and Richard's daughter lives in New York too we get this crazy parallel situation uh, but you know I'm just sitting there this morning with my oldest daughter and we're talking and 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 man it's just so awesome and I, but I when I have those kinds of conversations I just think man Lord thank you so much that we don't only love each other, but thank you that, um, you know, there's this mutual respect that yeah. she respects and appreciates me as her dad. She respects my my spiritual uh, opinion about things. Mm -hmm. And man, you know, yeah. that's priceless, you know. And then again, you know, you just go out from those circles and yes, likewise, you know, all, all of us have those and there's other people in that group with us. And, um, and then I would say too, and I know this is true with you, Richard, just that that personal discipline of God's word and prayer. Yeah. You know, that is so key in in a person's life. I know it's been a key in my life over the years. And, you know, this morning, I mean, you know, this isn't like any kind of a boasting, but you know, my morning was a couple chapters in Psalms. I'm making my way through Psalms. I'm in the eighties right now. Um, I'm kind of going back over John's gospel again. I got a new Bible, so I'm highlighting stuff, and I got a new version, so I'm mm -hmm. I'm meditating on you know mm -hmm. kind of the the wording, and um, I I read over First, Second Timothy, and Titus a while back, and I got to really highlight uh, First Timothy and Titus, but somehow I missed Second Timothy, so I'm back in Second Timothy, just again just highlighting verses, just looking at the slightly different translations mm -hmm. and stuff, and that for me is essential yeah I, I have got yeah. to have that for my own personal uh, connection with the Lord and just his input to me absolutely you know, from the scriptures yeah so yeah without it you, you know and again and just one more thought came to my mind when you're talking about sitting down with with Kristen you know and I'm, I'm thinking you know it's it's the people who who are only exposed to what we do um, who will not knowingly but they'll be the ones that that say things to us that make it more difficult for us to know who we really are because they just see what we do mm -hmm. but it's it's there's other people who know who we are, who we are yeah and that's that's the that's the opinion that you yeah. want most you know yeah yeah and and you know at the end of the day um we we want to be ultimately jesus people you know mm -hmm. one day what we did uh that's just going to be you know kind of rolled in there with what everybody else did throughout yeah. all of history, which is really just a, a tag on to what Jesus did, yeah. right? You know, we got to do a couple little things, but the Lord really did it all. And um, I, I think of Lloyd-Jones, and I remember, you know, when he, uh, somebody was talking to him about one time, or talking to him one time about like, you know, what would he, what would he do if he ever lost the ability to preach? And he said, I never lived to preach in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I thought, <laughs> good for you, because... That's not true of many people, but but you know his point was I I live for Jesus and yeah. to and to be in relationship with Him and preaching is my calling and thank God I've been able to do it but that's not what my life has been and and I think you know all of us um, ministry by God's grace I'm so thankful that I have been able to do this it's the most yeah. amazing yeah. thing in the world but it's not it's not at the top of the list the top of the list is that. Uh, I was lost, and Jesus found me, yeah. Yeah. and I've been living in communion with Him now for all these years, and, and I'm going to do that forever. So, yeah. hallelujah for that. You know, what's so interesting is, um, going back to that initial thought about pastors being examples, um, you know, knowing the both of you um, as, as well as I do, one of the things that I've always loved about the both of you is that I've seen you open the Bible and not only mark up your Bible, but your lives are marked by the Word. And I've, and I see you guys praying all the time. 
And because of, of that exposure to the example that you set for me, um, I can't tell you how many mornings I would get out of bed and I just don't feel like I want to read my Bible. I, I'm just so tired. And, and then I'll remember, you know what? Richard's probably sitting at that table in his house <laughs> with his Bible, with his highlighters, with his pen, and he's spending time with Jesus right now. Brian is probably opening up his Bible or he's going out for a run and he's talking with Jesus right now. And there have been so many mornings that the Lord used those examples, those kinds of moments that I've got to, to, to learn from both of you to say, you know what, John, get out of bed, go sit at the table and spend time with Jesus. Yeah. And so there is this long-term motivating impact mm. that that your lives have that, that many times we don't even think, like, like who are we really touching mm -hmm. by just sitting yeah. at the table reading my Bible? But I, I know you're, you're touching one guy. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And, you know, can I just think about what you're talking about, the devotional thing. Do you guys have the struggle of how quickly your mind wants to run to, oh, I want to preach on that? <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, here's three, three, three points I want to write down. But rather than just being like, I just want to sit in this. Yeah. Do you see a struggle with that? I did for decades. But for some reason right now, I don't. I, I don't know why. And it's not like I'm any more virtuous <laughs> than anyone else. I just, at this stage in life, for some reason, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. But I used to do it yeah. all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's like every, you know, every time I would sit down to just have my private time with the Lord, it would always end up being like, man, I could preach this here and I could tell those people that. Yeah. And, you know, at some point I, yes. you know, I kind of, I mean, who knows? I might go back there again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right no, I know that in this season, for sure, for me, I'm, I find it like we're, you know, we're doing like reading through the Bible in two years this, this, this time around mm -hmm. with the church. And um, I, I've been finding myself really slipping into the narrative like like yeah like just finding myself in the narrative yeah. rather than being like i just when when it says that jesus and he taught again and i'm just thinking what was it like to just you're yeah. with him and you're following him and he's mm -hmm. teaching again yeah. and again and yeah. and it says and he and he began to teach and the people came to hear him and be healed and i was just thinking like do i act like that crowd do i mm -hmm. do i want to hear him and let him heal stuff in my life. And so this this season for sure has been less than that. Yeah. But it, it takes me like it's really hard for me. I got to really dis I got to admit man I got to own it. I got to really work hard to go no don't do that. Or yeah. Yeah. maybe the other problem for me has been historically for me is like go to the kitchen table cuz they're left there, right? I've got mm -hmm. the things laying mm -hmm. there, right? Ready to go. Or oh man, I'm so far behind for Sunday morning. Maybe yeah. I'll just turn right. Yeah, out yeah. of my bedroom and go yeah. down to the hall yeah. to my off yeah. to my desk and start working, and that's my that's where I really yeah. get stuck. Yeah, and you know what I did with that because I used to that was the big battle for so long, and finally I don't know I just had a moment where I just thought you know I am going to make that time just as personal and devotional mm -hmm. as yeah. the other time. So I'm not in this constant conflict. Because mm -hmm. I, I used to be torn, like, yeah. oh, no, I'm trying to study for Sunday, but I didn't have my devotion today. And then, I, oh, gosh, I'm such a lousy guy. I didn't, you know, and then it's like, well, why can't I just really study for Sunday and, and connect with Jesus as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I started to try to, you know, do that a little better. Uh, but, and, and, you know, all of this, I mean, thank God for His grace. I mean, believe me, yeah. John, you know, there are plenty of times when maybe you're getting up struggling and thinking Brian's reading his Bible. No, Brian's not reading his Bible. <laughs> yeah. Brian's doing something else, <laughs> and he needs to be reading his Bible. Yeah. But, you know, so, yeah. I mean, we, we, we've all got those things. But, you know, God is, God is gracious. And, uh, Amen. But you know, at the end of at the end of the day, um, and, and then for for those of you that are tuning in and listening to us, you know, guys, just just remember, Jesus saved you first of all, so you could be His child. And uh, being a servant is great; it's it's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful thing. But the number one reason He saved you is because He loves you and He wants to to personally know you and, and be your father. Um, and your God in that way. And so if we keep that priority, mm -hmm. then we're going to do, we're, you know, we'll all have challenges and cha uh, difficulties, but we'll, we'll do well if we keep that priority. Amen. So, yes. Well, guys, thanks for sitting down and chatting. Oh, this was great. Look forward to the next time. And thank you for tuning in and watching. Hope you're 
blessed and if you want to spread the word just go ahead and uh, get it out through social media and um, let's just see as many people get encouraged as possible so until next time uh, on things that matter god bless you